I would agree with that. I'd like to talk a little bit about style. I, I know that style is a kind of a weird question to ask an author. I don't know that we think about our writing as having a particular style. We perhaps want to meet the quality of anything we've written before. Um, but I, for a writer writing in English who knows as many languages as you do, I, I think in reading your books, I feel those other languages. I feel the, the syntax, the different kinds of structures that come in uh, from your knowing other languages. Do you think about that in style or when you're working with your editor? Are you trying to create a style that is specifically Somali or uh, the, the polyglot that, that you identify with? I don't think I am... I go out of my way to create a style. I think the style, I would say a style is you are your style. Mm. You are, you know, what happens on occasion is that I'm, I am prone to taking refuge in metaphors and similes and allegories and proverbs. And these are the things that probably distinguish or not distinguish, separate, <coughs> differentiate my writing from the writings of, let's say, Americans, Europeans, and so on and so forth. And the reason is because we've been brought up on parables, on allegories, on, you know, and the majority of the, it, it, it is second nature to me to, to write in images and to seek, sometimes, you know, uh, um, sometimes some of the passages would read a kind of overwritten because you, you do not often encounter a text with so many, some people might think obstacles, but it is, you know, it's, it's a way of self-expression. Now, I usually say, you know, I don't like the kind of, I'm not saying, you know, I don't, I don't read them, but I'm saying, for example, there are some authors who are bland in their writing. Uh, one level in the same way as you know uh, a valley may be one you know leveled space I like the landscape to be full of mountains hills the sea, swamps different forms that nature expresses itself in and that way, you see, you have the full-fledged self-expression of nature. Mm -hmm. And that is what, what attracts me. Mm -hmm. Now, it is possible that sometimes, you know, uh, uh, you, wouldn't, you may not want a mountain in, in a place where you want, you know, to cross quite so easily. <laughs> and some people would say to you, come to the point. What's the point you're trying to make? <laughs> <laughs> So that's, that's, that's the style, if that is a style, uh, yeah. Mm. When you think about your books traveling around the world, uh, and the U.S., I think, is one of, one of the countries that does not enjoy publication of a lot of writers from around the world as much as, say, some of the European countries. We have a difficult time often getting writers here uh, in, in translation. So I wonder what it is, if you have any thoughts about what happens in between Africa and the U.S., where people in the U.S. often can't quite seem to grasp the significance, say, of a, a Somalian civil war, or um, any, any big, I'm thinking all of you know, tragedies at the moment, but of course there are some wonderful things that are tragedies, but Americans often don't seem to grasp the significance of, of them. What do you think that means? What is that? Well, short of 
obviously sounding foolish, I would say that a society that has been pampered, spoiled, a society that has or assumes to have almost everything, a society that's rich, advanced technologically, uh, you know, looks after itself, large enough to call itself the USA of America, and so on and so forth. That kind of society may not take easily to any other society. And the reason is because it's enough of a problem getting to know the other Americans. You know, you're a large nation with so many variables, a large nation that also is not interested in its own history, really. And the reason is because the majority of them would not be interested in slavery, the majority of them. How, how much do Americans know about slavery? How much do they know about, you know, Martin Luther King? How much do they know about, uh, you know, uh, aside from cliches? Societies, therefore, whether American, African, Somali, um, anything, societies usually get to know only about the basics of society. They don't like going deep into it because when you dig deeper and deeper and deeper in America, what you dig up may frighten you. Mm. Understandable, therefore, that one avoids it. One says, you know, I don't want to dig up this, uh, this, this, this deep into, into this history. Now you could find, for example, um, since coming here, I've been in North America the past few days, a lot is being made of things that didn't make much sense to someone like me. I mean, whether Obama is African-American or whether he is African-American. <laughs> Well, there you are, you see, whether he is African-American or African-American. <laughs> and, and, and why? The reason is because it is, is it possible? I don't want to be thrown out of this country, so I should <laughs> Is it possible in actual fact you don't want to know more about some of the other things, but you would rather talk about African-American enough compared it to the other, other African-American because you don't want to go to the areas that are controversial and, uh, you know, that are hurtful in your history and so on and so forth. I do not know. I don't know. I mean, I, I live in Cape Town and therefore I, 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 wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't dare <laughs> venture. As a guest, I, I will have to be very careful and cautious. <laughs> well, I would ask you about if you had thoughts about U.S. involvement, the military involvement in Somalia in the 90s. Um, did you have any opinion or ideas about it? Oh, I had, I had a lot of opinion, <laughs> yes. I had, <laughs> I, I had lots of them. In fact, I even wrote an editorial, an op-ed in the New York Times uh, when, when the Americans went in. And then for my pains, I also wrote a novel called Lynx, which is the beginning of the trilogy I am currently working on. Um, and for, you know, again, with apologies to you, I should, I should actually um, remind, well, you and, yeah, that this is a new trilogy which began with Lynx, and Lynx mm -hmm. is the one where the American involvement in Somalia in the, in the, 19, in the early 1990s is stated quite clearly what, not what my position is, but what the potential, the position of a Somali would be vis-a-vis -vis the American involvement. Uh, and I would also say, <laughs> as we speak and we sit here, America is involved in bombing uh, certain parts of Somalia now. I mean, they were bombing it last week, and for all I know, they may have bombed some this morning uh, in an attempt, in an attempt, I understand, 
to kill pro al qaeda uh, suspects uh, i don't know how how one could aim a bullet at someone whom you can't see in a forest that you do not well i mean you know there are certain things that defy the imagination of a novelist and i think this is one of them uh, and the reason is because in the current situation in Somalia, the Americans are bombing the southern part of Somalia, the Somali coast, uh, bombing some camps that are, that are said to host Pro Al Qaeda. I do not. I do not know enough to, mm -hmm. to write about it. Uh, I've been asked to write an op-ed for the New York Times and the New Yorker, but I couldn't. I don't have enough information to write, and therefore I, I am reserving judgment until I know enough. Okay. Well, clearly, we have some writers in the audience, and. Uh, two, two different questions. One was, are there any younger uh, Somali writers coming up that, that you, uh, whose names you know uh, that you could mention? And do you have any um, advice or suggestions for a young Somali writer who would be in the US working? What path could they be following to, to become as fabulous as you are? Well, I would say that the best advice I would give to any writer, for that matter, whether Somali or non-Somali, is, you know, write. And I would say again, write. I would say write, 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 because no one can teach you to write. It's one of those self-taught professions. You have to work very, very hard. It is not very, it's not impossible to, be, to become a great writer. But I think the greatest problem that I've faced many, many of the younger people I know who are interested in writing is because they become impatient. They want to succeed immediately. They want to... Somebody's protesting against some of the things I'm saying, probably. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, but so what I'm saying is the greatest, the greatest obstacle to young writers coming up is their impatience. And I would usually say that 60% of a writer's ability to produce some writing depends on the patience. 20% is talent, and another 20% is more patience. <laughs> and so I think patience is the only thing. And I always say to other people, if I have done it, so can you. If I have been able to do it, I am quite sure there are many, many more talented people, and I've met them everywhere. What they don't have and what I have is the patience. Mm -hmm. 